In today's video, we're going to see how we can use electrolysis to extract reactive metals from their oxides by first melting them into their molten arnic compounds. As we've already seen in other videos, metals often exist as oxides, like aluminium oxide or copper oxide. If we want to remove the oxygen to isolate the pure metal though, then we're going to need to reduce the metal in the oxide, which is just the fancy way of saying remove the oxygen. Now, the cheap and easy way to do this is by reduction with carbon, where the carbon atoms displace the metal in the metal oxide to form pure metal and carbon dioxide. However, this only works for metals that are less reactive than carbon, like zinc, iron and copper. For all of these more reactive ones though, we have to instead rely on electrolysis, which is much more expensive because it requires loads of energy. As you saw in the last video, electrolysis is a process by which we can separate ionic compounds into their pure elements by passing an electric current through an electrolyte. So if our electrolyte was aluminium oxide, then we could use electrolysis to split it into pure aluminium and oxygen. The issue though is that electrolysis only works if the ions can move, but aluminium oxide is solid so the ions are all fixed in place. And to make matters worse, it's found within an ore called bauxite. So before we can do anything, we have to somehow turn this solid bauxite into molten aluminium oxide. Because if it's molten, then the ions will be free to move around, which is what it needs to be considered an electrolyte. The first step is to purify the aluminium oxide from the bauxite that we mine from the ground which you don't need to know the details of. Next, we need to melt our aluminium oxide to make it molten, which is actually quite hard because it has a melting point of over 2000 degrees Celsius. So we first mix the aluminium oxide with a mineral called cryolite, which lowers the melting point. Even so, it still requires really high temperatures and so loads of energy. So overall, we need to purify it, then mix it with cryolite, and then we can melt it. Now that we have our molten mixture, we can set up our electrolysis equipment. So we need some sort of beaker to hold our molten aluminium oxide, which remember is our electrolyte. And we need our two electrodes, which are made of carbon and act as conductors through which the electrons can pass. On the right, we have the positive electrode called the anode. And on the left, we have the negative electrode, which we call the cathode. And then we connect these with a wire and some sort of power source like a battery so that electrons can flow in a complete circuit. If we take a closer look at our electrolyte of molten aluminium oxide, there will be oxygen 2 minus ions and aluminium 3 plus ions. Because they're negative, the oxygen 2 minus ions will be attracted to the positive anode on the right where they'll transfer their two extra electrons to the anode and be discharged to oxygen atoms, at which point each pair can combine to form an oxygen molecule and float off into the air. The electrons, though, will be passed through the wire to the negative cathode on the left. As it's negative, it will attract the positive ions in the electrolyte and can donate electrons to them. In our case, it will donate three electrons to each aluminium three plus ion to form aluminium atoms, which will then slowly pool in the bottom of the beaker as molten aluminium metal. Now that we've seen what's happening at each electrode, we can work out the exact equations that describe the electrolysis process. We do this using two half equations, one describing the reaction at each electrode, at the anode, we have oxygen 2 minus ions going to form oxygen atoms plus 2 electrons. However, since oxygen forms diatomic molecules, we're going to need 2 oxygen ions on the left, and so 4 electrons will be released in total. Then at the cathode, we have aluminium 3 plus ions combining with 3 electrons to form molten aluminium. Now you might have noticed that because the oxygen ions are losing electrons at the anode, 
we can say that the oxygen is being oxidized, while the aluminium ions, which gain electrons, are being reduced. If you ever can't remember which is which, just remember the mnemonic oil rig, which tells us that oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. In addition to these half equations, we can also write the overall equation for the electrolysis reaction. We start with aluminium oxide in liquid form, and we know this goes to form aluminium, also a liquid, and oxygen as a gas. So all we need to do is balance it and it will look like this. In the next video, we take a look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. That's all for this video though, so cheers for watching and we'll see you next time.